Wow, i got a great podcast in store for you guys today. I sit down with Haley Hevelson, a sex and relationship management coach. We talk about the fifth dimension, intentions and relationships, how to get your best orgasm, birth control, what's happening with society and what needs to happen, and a lot of holistic remedies for things that we experience every day. So listen in, tune in, and enjoy. Alrighty, Miss Haley, welcome to the fifth episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. Cool, thanks. I'm really excited to be here. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? I'm doing good. So, how do we know each other? Okay, I think we met through Chelsea, but I actually met you the very first time at Umama's free, free workout event. Sweat pack yeah. mm-hmm. at the Mercedes Benz Home Depot backyard. Yes, yeah, that was a really fun day. That was a fun day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what all did you do out there? I did the kettlebell swing one, and then we did the I don't even know what it was called. It was the one where you do like, like bear crawl, and, mm-hmm. then, and then the animal flow, hip hop. Because I take I take vixen hip hop. Yep, mm-hmm. the vixen people were so cool. Oh yeah, that was a great class. Yeah, I've been talking with them a little bit after, and everybody seems so energetic and fun, full of life. Yes, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So what kind of workouts do you like to do? Um, I take hip-hop and I love heated spin. Have you heard of Sweatshop? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I used to work there, so I love doing those classes and hip-hop and then just like variety, yoga, um, going for a run. I get bored, so it's good to, you know, Mix try. It up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, I'm on this fitness journey right now, and I'd say the biggest contributing fact to staying consistent with it is changing it up, making it sporadic, shocking your body mm-hmm. and uh, training all these different ways because doing just the same thing over and over is going to give you this repetition and make yeah. you not want to do it anymore and desirable. Definitely, that is boring. Wait, so do you go to a gym or are you? Yeah, so I work out at X3 Sports. I also run. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really my favorite thing. Cool. Um, I'm 31 and I've never run like this. I did cross country growing up in middle and high school. I did track, I did cross, um, swim team. Not much uh, team sports. I wasn't ever very coordinated with a ball and passing with other people, Mm -hmm. Um, but always an individual athlete. And so I ran in my life, but never like this. Um, I'm doing five to 15 miles every single day. I'm like 110 days straight. Oh, wow, that's amazing, good for you. Yeah, thank you. Outside or inside? Outside, oh, good. barefoot, yeah. usually. Wow, get in. I'll go run in the grass. That's amazing, wow. That's that's really good, because think about it, I feel like when you feel, it's like that rush of when you get done doing that, you know, it's really good. I mean, even during, it, it kicks in. Mm-hmm. You can feel this high. People talk about it, right? Like, that runner's high. There's really no supplement. There's no drug. There's no food. There's nothing out there that can match. Your body naturally pumping serotonin, dopamine, endorphins from this workout. And I'd say for me, it's like 25 minutes through my workout, 20, 25. I start to feel my center chakras start opening up and releasing toxins and oh, wow. start burning and I feel this second wave or third wave of energy and it's crazy. It's, um, I attribute a lot of it to my diet. We're all vegan, plant-based, about nine months. Good for you, yes, I'm all about that. So yeah, what's your diet like? I'm not all the way vegan, but I'm vegetarian all the way to be vegan. Okay, what do yeah. you like to eat? Um, I, you know, I basically live off Arden's garden. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, Hey Arden. Yeah, yeah, love my, ya. My, where is it? Yes, yes. Thank you for saving our lives over and over. Yes, Cheers. and then the uh, ginger shots are amazing. Oh, I love shooting me some ginger. Mm-hmm. What about E3? Have you done that? Mm-hmm. It's a uh, green algae. I got that from the other, this other juice bar that I love going to over on Roswell Road. But it's further down. It's near, like, the Whole Foods. Okay. Yeah, it's across from that. Um, I can't think of their name. Clean something? I don't know. They're amazing, though. They do the raw, I mean, uh, the green and blue algae E3 shots. Okay. Yeah. 
Nice. But yeah, so rice bowls, like, I, my sister's vegetarian, so a lot of it's, like, super easy. Beans, rice, guacamole, salsa, mm. whatever, mm. you know. Mm. <laughs> I know, yeah. Whatever's it's... the quickest and the easiest. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, and then just, like, like, I don't really like making food, so whatever. She's like, I have a salad, and then we have, um, like, I do a lot of guacamole. Yeah, so. So good. Mm -hmm. Ditto. I mean, avocado is the most nutritious and powerful food in the world behind a papaya. Um, and papayas are not very easy to eat. Avocado, you can literally, it, it comes in this to-go wrap. It's skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll, I'll take a knife with me, an avocado, and just chop it. Throw some pink Himalayan sea salt, pepper, maybe a little bit of lemon juice. Uh, Wow. I'm salvinating just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. No, I love that you do that though because I think that, like, you've noticed your energy levels shoot up. Right? Shoot up. Yeah. And I know that people, like, vegan diet in the community, they're annoying and people mm -hmm. are like, oh, like, blah, blah. But it's just because we feel like we do. We're at mm -hmm. this new vibrational level, this energy, and just want to share. <laughs> Yeah. That's the whole reason that it, vegans are so energetic and, mm -hmm. and annoying is because it feels so good. Yeah. We feel like we've never felt before in our lives mm -hmm. and we want everybody else to feel this way. And yeah. you can't with processed food and meat. You just can't. Mm -mm. Well, and the thing is, too, I don't know how woo-woo you are, but you know how, like, the energy, you know? And I, I think that, like, when I, when I eat Chick-fil-A or when I eat Krispy Kreme or when I eat any of that stuff, you feel like after. Oh, absolutely. You know? I'm pretty woo-woo. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought you were. I'm yeah. pretty woo-woo. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah, so you know, like, you're literally absorbing the animal's energy. Or lack thereof, mm -hmm. because it's dead. Well, yeah, very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically dead energy, yeah. Dead energy, mm -hmm. angstroms. And that's the anxiety and the stress that a lot of people feel, which is, like, rampant now in the collective consciousness. Absolutely. I love that you say that. So, to piggyback on that, the census is coming out next year, right? 2020? Mm-hmm. And um, there's so much importance around the census. How familiar are you with it? A little bit, but I do know we are stepping into the fifth dimension. What does that mean? Um, well, okay, so we're in 3D is scarcity, lack, fear. We're already moving into the fourth in terms of thoughts create reality. Then the fifth dimension is we're all one, all one collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's why people are very, like, we're all love. That's why a lot of people who are really spiritual talk about how, like, what you do affects other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Truly. I love that. Mm -hmm. So the census would be the fifth dimension, for sure. Being oh, cool. Taking a collective data sample of every person in America. And so some pre-census data came out about a month ago. And for the first time since they started tracking humans mm -hmm. in America, life expectancy for Caucasians has gone down. Yeah, yeah. And for Hispanic, African American, and Asian American, it's gone up. With Hispanic going up the highest, mm -hmm. being lowest on wealth gap and normal financial income. So, People with the least amount of money are the happiest people in America. And mm -hmm. it just, it just it's, it's a beautiful, funny statistic to me. Mm -hmm. All of it is self-imposed. The reason Caucasian's life expectancy has gone down is because of disease, heartache, depression, you know, overdose. All these things are self-imposed illnesses. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow, that is so interesting. I mean, it doesn't drive me to think about it. Like, you know, four years ago when I was in Court America, like, it's like living off happy hour and the drinking and the, you know, and all that. And, you, like, people do that, what, four or five days a week? Like, that's going to catch up to you. Absolutely. Living for the happy hour. But really, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. For sure, me too. Mm -hmm. I've been there. So what's your background? Okay, so four years ago I worked in insurance. I was in underwriting. Um, so basically I moved here, I was a fashion major, and they, I couldn't find a job in fashion. And so it was fashion merchandising, and I thought, well, I'll just get a marketing job at like a fashion company or promoting, something like that. Where'd you move here from? Birmingham. Okay. Yeah, and so, 
I, my whole family does insurance, but me and my brother. And so my, it was my sister and I moved here. And my dad was like, well, just get into insurance. Maybe you'll like it. You'll figure things out as you go. And so I got into it, and right away I was like, I don't like this, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm a social butterfly, and the people are really nice, you know? But I thought that it, I hated sitting in a cubicle in the fluorescent lights, and I didn't like, um, it was very hard, mm. you know? And, but I loved the travel with it. Like, I did meet really great people, but it just wasn't, it was, you know, looking at numbers all day, and that's, not me, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so then after nine months, I left that. I got let go, actually, which is funny. But, um, because I didn't pass one of the tests. <laughs> what was the test? I don't know. It was one of those, like, certification tests. Yeah. And my boss was super sweet. Like, we still talk to this day, which is funny. But, um, yeah, I just didn't get it at all. But, yeah, so then I left that job. And then I was, like, three months without a job. And then I ended up meeting this guy through networking, because I network a lot. And he got me a job through Aflac. Because I thought, well, maybe, you know, it's still insurance, but it's in and out of the office, but that sells. And that was a hardcore, you know. I flag? Yeah. How so? Well, people, I mean, you're literally basically door-to-door salesperson, you know. Um, that was another one I didn't like at all, but I got great experience. Mm. And got tough skin. Yes. Yeah, and I got to meet a lot of people, and I love that. Because, you know, obviously, like, it's so fun, like, meeting different people, having new experiences, you know. Um, so I got to see all of Atlanta, you know, because I'm driving around, I'm handing my flyers, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to sell this, you know. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, yeah, so then I love that, and then, um, I just did, like, I worked as a PA at one point, because I always thought my childhood dream was to, um, you know, produce and act. Um, because I worked for Dr. Phil in a summer in college. Okay, cool. Yeah, so nice. that was Um, but yeah, so long story short, got super into health and wellness, spirituality, started sending courses, reading, and then I worked with a mentor and we realized that I was not a health coach, I'm a sexuality coach, so. Okay, mm-hmm. so how'd you get into this? Um, well, basically I love health, but I realized like my true passion is sexuality and spirituality, because that's what I struggle with the most. Why? Well, because like when I was on an antidepressant, when I was in cold America, actually I got on it when I was in um, college. But I was on that and birth control, and a lot of women that are on both of those, you can't have an orgasm. Because you're so, like, yeah, you don't feel anything, <laughs> you know? And so I literally thought there was something wrong with me, because, like, there would be times where nothing was happening. And so I went to the sex therapist, and she was like, oh, you just need this toy, and then, like, all this stuff. It was, like, down the rabbit hole. But I know not funny. But I literally, like, read all these courses, did all these books, I mean, uh, uh, courses, books, all this stuff. And so I um, worked with a mentor, and it was so funny because she was like, you're, you know, finally one day I was like, I'm a sex coach. <laughs> that was so funny. I was like, I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's great. But, and then I went on a sexual retreat last July. And so, yeah, it's kind of fast forward to where, I'm in, where I am now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Were you on Andrew Deitch's podcast? No. Okay. Yeah, he had a um, sex and relationship therapist on there. Oh, cool. Um, because I was thinking about the birth control mm. and the anti-depression. So yeah. something I heard recently is that for every month a woman is on birth control, it takes a year for them to be able to get back into the groove of having kids. Yeah, it's probably Bio- right. Biolo- Help me, help me here. Well, Biology? Bi- Biologically? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah biologically. <laughs> well, think about it. When I was going through my uh, situation, she was like, oh, don't worry about it. You can just, uh, my psychiatrist told me, we can just prescribe you another pill to counteract the side effect of that pill. And that's when I was like, no. No. But yeah, you're right. Because I meet women all the time that are on multiple different pharmaceutical drugs. And there are around our age, 20s, 30s. And it's like, well, do you, are you going to be able to have kids? Like, I don't know. There's really no long-term studies I know, on the scary. effects of birth control on the women. And it's our generation, our friends, mm-hmm. <laughs> are the ones that are going to bear the brunt of it the worst. Yeah. And not be able to have children later in life. We don't really know. Um, all we know is that it puts you on pregnant kind of all the time. Yeah. Right? That's what the birth control pill does. Mm-hmm. Make, it affects your emotions. <laughs> your emotions, truly. And it 
desensitizes women. It makes them less horny. Mm -hmm. It makes them makes y'all so many. Yeah, like you're crying at one point, you're happy, it's all over the place. It's ridiculous, mm -hmm. it's crazy, and I can't believe they're just pumping it down our throats. Yeah, definitely. Well, I was talking to one about this the other day, and we do, we all can't bash it, because it is great, because women do get to work, and there are all our benefits, but when you learn how to track it naturally, you realize your body is infertile every day of the month. You know, it's only like four days in post. Like so, one, really? Yeah, really one. But yeah, if you want to be super careful before. Yeah, it's like, so... What are those four days? After uh, the period? When you're ovulating. When do you ovulate? Um, after your period. I don't know exactly, man. I need to always I have my phone. It's like a couple days after yeah, the period? Yeah, it's like after your... Um, I, I do everything on this app. So there's the Daisy Fertility Monitor where it's a temperature that you take every morning. If it turns green, you're good to have sex. If it turns red, you just use protection. It's really cool, the futuristic... Wait, what? It's called the Daisy Fertility Monitor, and you literally take it in your mouth every morning, and it's green. It turns different colors. So it's if it turns green, you're good to have sex. If it turns red, you, you have to use protection. But it's really cool, the future of... You know, fertility, because really, you can do that. Now, me now, I just, like, it's really, okay, what I want to say is it's really obvious to tell me you're ovulating. Like, you basically, you know, it's really easy. How's but, that? Like, you basically just want to have sex 24 hours out. Really? <laughs> you know? Yeah, literally. Like, when I first got birth control, I was like, oh, wow, this is what they mean. Because I never felt that sexual. When you got off birth control. Yeah, because think about it. So many women don't realize, like, if you've been on birth control for, like, I was on it since high school almost 10 years wow. and so I'm like oh wow no wonder why I wasn't that sexual I mean I was sexual but nothing right out what I am now right <laughs> yeah absolutely um yeah so here it is and so it's just this tracking um wow. app. yeah and so it shows your, you what's your period um these days okay yeah mine's mainly four days and then today's the 12th and so it's super careful so it's always but it's cool because you that's like a so 7, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 days later, ovulate? Yeah, so it's super, um, you know, really careful. So on these days, it's like 22%, 32%. Yeah, so you should be careful those days. Wow. But that's what I always tell women. But again, because of our society and social programming, I felt the wrath of fear of, oh my God, I'm going to get pregnant right off when I got off birth control. So it's that fear and the anxiety that I don't blame women because I have been there and it is scary. Right. But once you have to take your health in your hands and realize, I'm going to learn this. This isn't scary. Women of thousands of years have learned this. So what would you recommend for women trying to get more in touch with their cycle and mm, their connection uh, with that? Okay, so read the book Beyond the Pill. That's a good one. There's several different books on this topic, but first you just really need to trust your body. Your body tells you, like what I was saying previously. Um, also get an app that you trust. I use Glow, there's the Daisy Fertility Monitor. Um, there's all these different apps now that can help you track your cycle. Um, it's the Fertility Awareness Method. That's the method that I'm doing, but yeah, and then if you're, you have a partner, get him excited about it. Guys want to know. They don't want, I mean, we're all in the age now where unless you're planning to have kids, we don't want kids right now, <laughs> you know? Like, Absolutely. So it's, yeah, get him involved. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been with your partner? Oh, I'm single right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Get up. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I was dating someone, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually how it goes, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I feel like at this point, you know, it's like yes or no. You know what you want, you know? Yeah, I'll just be honest. Um, I am on this new level for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really hard to connect with somebody on that level. Mm -hmm. Um. So I've been going on a lot of first dates uh, over the past six months or so. Uh, last year I was 50 pounds overweight, um, unhappy, not helping society or myself 
And so I've never really been like that. I've always been a productive member of society and, and for myself and physical and active. And so I kind of got out of the sync and rhythm of dating and, and everything that goes with that. And this year have been climbing back and now I'm, I'm so picky with everything that I do mm -hmm. with my time and my intentions and where I want to put my attention. Yeah. That if, if my significant other isn't, isn't of those qualities and I'm not even, and honestly, mm -hmm. I could never procreate with a non vegan human. I'm getting that place to be honest with you, yeah. And I'm just kind of getting to the place where I, I will admit that on the internet, mm -hmm. that I can't procreate with a non-vegan. I just can't. Like, if they're not nutritionally woke, I don't want to fuck with them. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, if we're going to go there, y'all, uh, the mucus builds up in your, yeah. So I'm still getting, you know, rid of that. It's it's another level, especially for me, for y'all, like, um, prostate cancer is too much dairy. So for oh, yeah. be blunt about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, cutting out dairy, poultry, I drank whole milk. Oh, wow. Just by the gallon. Mm -hmm. I drank a gallon every other day for my entire life. Oh, wow. Yeah. So cutting all that out, and I did it cold turkey, just mm -hmm. zero to 100. <laughs> yeah. And my body, um, it flushed it out. It was fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. And we all have parasites, too. I'm sure you're still getting rid of it. Um, I think it's gone. I think it's all gone. That's good. I've wow. gone. I've. I, I can see the black in my poop. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see the, the tars and the metals and the stuff that shouldn't really be in there mm -hmm. getting flushed out by my diet, by the fruits wow. and the vegetables that I was eating. Well, good for you. That's amazing. Well, listen, I agree with you on that. That that's kind of where I'm at in my place, in my life too. To be honest, it's like we're reaching a point where we're growing at such an accelerated place that unless your partner is, it's like, Because, eh. like, I listen to a lady who I've taken several of her courses on sexuality, and she says, you grow or you die. So. Absolutely. So what are some tips and tidbits you'd recommend people trying to get more touch in their sexuality? Ooh. Okay, well, okay, well, I'll do two. Okay, so for women... Ladies, it's really about self-pleasure. A lot of women don't, you know, we're still in the South. And there's still so much shame around that with religious programming. So I meet women all the time that don't do that at all. And so they really need to start just getting in touch with their body, figuring out what do you like, what do you want? You know, not what he wants, what do you like? And just learning your body, like what do you, like, there's so many different types of orgasms too, which is really exciting and fun and I'm still learning. Um, so that would be my huge tip is just to figure out like what daily sexual practice do you want to devote to, whether it's self-pleasure, it could be jade egg. Um, there's a crystal dill. Jade egg? Yeah, it's an egg that you stick inside of you and, here I can drink on that. And you do exercises with, like right now I'm working on vaginal weightlifting, so I can lift scissors, but I haven't been able to lift, lift anything past Wait, that. Wait, what? Okay, so what you do... <laughs> so funny. Okay, so you, there's an egg that you stick inside you, and then you tie a string to it, right? Okay. And then the scissors are here, because I'm tying the scissors. Okay. And I'm standing up, right? Because gotcha. most of us have really weak pelvic floor, even men. Oh. And this is really vital, because think about it, especially for a woman. As we get older, everything goes, and this is why a lot of women have prolapse, and they have incontinence after they have a baby. It's because you have a weak pelvic floor, and I'm, I'm still not where I want to be my pelvic floor. Wow. But men, too, this is really vital because you want that strong cock, right? Um, but, yeah, so this is vital. So that's, I mean, obviously that's more advanced stuff for the beginners. Just focus on, like, sticking the egg inside you and develop. And obviously you guys can email me if you want. Like, I know where to get the egg, and you want real jade. But, um, you know, just to develop a relationship with your pussy, again, a lot of, or yoni, whatever you want to call it. We, a lot of women don't have relationships with their vaginas, and then they, like, resent them, and it's like this unhealthy but she's always telling you whether you're in the right relationship or not. You know, like I was with a guy once and all of a sudden it just like was a lot of pain. I was like, I felt like this towards him. That's my body being like, what are you doing? You know, our bodies are so much smarter than we are, but we're ignoring them. Mm. 
Because our intuition's in our body. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's also the crystal wand, which is, I don't do vibrators. No. Why? Well, for one, we're overstimulated as it is in America. So that's fine every once in a while if you want to do it. But, like, I meet women all the time that cannot come without it. Yeah. And they're addicted to it. And it's like, well, you're missing out on all of this. Yeah. Your whole body is orgasmic. I've had it where, now obviously I want to get to the point where this can ha happen daily, but where you're just sitting there and you're focusing on the breath and you can have an orgasm. But... That can happen? Yeah. It's really powerful. Have you been able to do that? Yeah. Only wow. once. I haven't done it since then, but it's really cool. Wow. But that's what I always want to tell women. I'm like, man, you're having those weak little clitor orgasms of the vibrator. When, girlfriend, you can be doing, I mean, you could like have g-spot squirting orgasms you know anybody yeah all women can so a nipple and throat and anal and like there there's just so many different levels okay um and our chakras too so but yeah so the wand is good because you again we hold so much tension here right and stress and societal programming all in past life stuff all sorts of stuff so the wand, you get in there and you just kind of go towards the painful spots and just kind of work through. Because a lot of women, you know, you have numb pussies. This is all this emotional stuff in there. They need to clear it out. And it's numb. Yeah, I went through that. I was like, I feel nothing. And then right here, like my heart chakra was blocked. And I was like, I don't feel anything. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how would you suggest for a woman to be able to get to the g-spot squirting orgasm state okay so whew, depends on where she's at with her own sexuality like whether she's completely shut down or whether she's you know exploring but i would say my first thing again go back to daily self-pleasure and there's different toys like the curved ones are really good for squirting um you know you Last time it happened to me, it was he, this a man, like, he, he used his fingers and helped me. Like, literally, um, there are a variety of ways, you know? Again, be open-minded and don't have shame about that because I think that a lot of women, and I used to be like this too, like, I was with a partner once and where he didn't like me to do that. And so it, I, I'd only done it with him, and I didn't know. Isn't that crazy? He didn't like you to squirt? Yes, and, like, I couldn't control it. And so, him. yeah, and so then it got to the point where I would, I would like, like hold it in. And so. What? Yeah. Oh. So basically what. What, what a, a beautiful of, thing being shut down. I know, but, but again, David, that's what a lot of our society is messed up because women, we are so shut down sexually. And I still notice myself like closing like the throat chakra and like, it's just, we could do a whole video on that. But, but yeah, so then, um. You know, that's why, so ladies, all women can squirt, but you have to be with a man you feel safe with, you trust him, you can surrender. How's your, like, this is a whole thing, but like, how's your relationship outside of the bedroom? You know, because a lot of women, you they get so close to doing it and they go to the bathroom because they're like, oh, I think I have to pee. No, you just needed to squirt, but you didn't allow yourself to do it. And then now it's like all this build up of tension. But yeah, I mean, that's, it's just really all about self exploration and um, you know, safety. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've dated a so, few squirters, yeah. and um, it's a lot of laundry. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, you can't control it, but it's like the best feeling in the world when it does happen. Um, yeah. yeah. I just saw this um, comparison between the male and the female orgasm, and it's like the male is relative to a single piston and a female is relative to like an entire V8 system. Mm -hmm. It's just so much more complex and, and uh, depth that we don't have in our orgasm. You do. You we just do? Have, you're not aware of it. Yeah, yeah. You need to learn how to separate orgasm from ejaculation, circulate the energy, and then you can have multiple. Um, my, the guy I was with, I told him to, how to do that. But yeah, you can, um, yeah, men can definitely have multiple. Again, that's a, it's so important for men to learn how to co separate ejaculation completely. And then once you do that, and you're circulating the energy into your third eye, like it's the this most insane experience, that's what men tell me. Um, and you can literally have multiple, full body. 
because you know you're expanding the energy. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, what you were saying before, yeah, it is true because you're. Most guys' normal orgasm is equivalent to the clitoral orgasm in women, mm. which, let's face it, that's like that. I mean, yeah, it's a great feeling or whatever, but I can get that same feeling in a brownie or a smoothie. Fact. You know? um, yeah, I'd say my orgasms are a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a really intentional breather. Oh, okay, that's good. So you're I, focusing on circulating. I, I, I do huge breathing. I do breathing exercises every day, every morning. Kundalini Ego Eradicator is one of my favorite. Have you done that before like this? Yes, I didn't know what you saying. So I taught her that. Oh, cool! Where did you learn that from? From a Kundalini yoga instructor about five years ago. Oh, wow. Um, do you know who Matra Chia is? Mm -mm. Okay, but you need to get all into him. He wrote the book called The Multi Orgasmic Man, which every man. What? He wrote the book called The Multi Orgasmic Multi. Man, which all men need to learn. It talks about that technique that I was talking to you about. Okay. Separating the. Yeah, yeah. I need that. I'm going to mm -hmm. download it. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is why, again, I mean, this is a whole other thing, too, the whole porn thing. Like, most guys are addicted to porn, but it's like, that's nothing compared to what you could be experiencing in Tantra. You could be having, like, multi-dimensional sex, you know? It's crazy. Like, I had a vision in Costa Rica. What was it? Uh, it was of women running naked in the beach. <laughs> that's so funny, because I want to host retreats. Okay. So I'm literally laying there on the table, and I have this vision of a woman running on the beach naked saying, I'm fucking powerful. And I was like, yes. And that was a vision. And then I opened my eyes and just started crying. <laughs> so yeah? it was cool, yeah. The vision, was it an orgasm? No, or? well, I had an orgasm before it, like a full body juice bud. Um, and then I was just laying there and then that's when that happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's why, you know, and you realize this too with the power of the diet, like, we, I mean, with intuition, and then you can go into like being clairvoyant and all that, like, there's so much we don't see, right? Like, see, but we can see with our third eye. Absolutely. Yeah. Love focusing on that. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> so what were you saying earlier about the guy with the, or the semen? <gasps> oh, yes! Okay, so, oh, you would love him. He's so amazing. Okay, shout out to Jonathan White, Sexual Kung Fu. He's a good friend. Once I started getting all into this, I basically followed everybody in my industry on Instagram, and I found him. And he works with men. He used to be addicted to porn. Watched it like every day since he was like in middle school. Now he's completely off that, and he helps men. And he studies Tantra, and so he, I interviewed him last night, and he was talking about the power of semen retention, which have you heard of that? Okay, so have you heard of NoFap? Now, okay, so NoFap is a huge movement because porn addiction, that's one thing that people don't realize. Like, it's taking your time away. Like, you know? Um, because I've dated guys that have had issues with that. Like, wouldn't you rather want to do something else with your time? So, NoFap is literally no porn. Now, there's different variations of it, but some of the guys do no porn, no masturbation, um, like, no, nothing, no ejaculating, no sex. They completely. What does FAP stand for? I don't even know. But they call it no fat, which is interesting. I've seen that and heard yeah. it before, for sure. Um, but yeah, so basically the method that Jonathan does, though, is he still has sex. He just ejaculates every seven days. Because think about it, it builds up. The, what men need to realize is that building up the testosterone, you deplete yourself of testosterone. Every time you're ejaculating, you're just like literally throwing away all those vital nutrients. Like your uh, semen is literally your seed. It's your, you know, your essence. It's your... It's like different than for women. Like that's literally, you know, that's a lot in there. And so, um, yeah, so he's a big fan of semen retention. I could tell by the way he looks and how he talks that it's true. Like it, it's like, whoa. Um, and so if you want to just do it for vain reasons, because women are going to be like, you know, because we can tell. But in your energy levels and just like all around, like there's so many benefits. And then, of course, you last longer in bed. You have more stamina. If you... Do you see retention? So, many people would say the contrary. That if you hold your semen in as soon as you get in bed, you're going to come faster. Mm. Yes, but that's because you need to know what he's teaching. I don't know all the details of the method. All I know is that if you do it right, you can still be ex expending the energy, whether it's exercise, whether it's... You know, you have to release it, obviously, somehow. But on those days that you're not ejaculating do something like you know how you're running or 
um, you know, you can just practice circulating the energy with the microcosmic orbit. Um, yeah, because that's what you just said. Yeah, that is the problem. Is a lot of guys don't know what they're doing, and then they get in bed. It's like, oh, and it's like, oh, nothing's worse than when that happens, right? Right. Um, but yeah, once you know, like, it's pretty cool. Word. Yeah, I um, I dated my yoga instructor in college. She was 16 years older than me. Mm-hmm. I was 19, she was 35. Oh. And um, she taught me a lot. Uh, That's good. On the third eye and channeling and breathing. And she taught me Wim Hof. Yes, wow. A long time ago. And I mean, she was also my yoga instructor. And I just had the hots for her. I was, yeah, well, you got so many benefits. Yeah, yeah, and so I I learned a lot a lot through my sexual journey. Yeah. With her mm -hmm. and um, just being really intentional on that breath, and I was also a sperm donor in college. Really. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll save the deep details for a later podcast. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I know all about semen. Oh, wow. I know all about my semen, its motility. That's interesting. Its vitality, um, the volume, how much generally I'm producing. And um, so I can see both sides of storing it and retaining it and what that does. Yeah. But also pumping it out and making new. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, that's why he's, he does it every, like, seven days. He does ejaculate. Because you can't Just once water. every seven days? Well, I don't know how often he's ejaculating on the seventh day. But I do know that he doesn't do it every day. But he's still having sex. He has a girlfriend. Word. Yeah. But I do know that I did have sex with a guy that had this method. And, like, one thing I want to say is, like, the average man nowadays, 75% of men only last seven minutes. Which is really sad for women. Let's be real. Yeah. Y'all can't even come in seven minutes. Oh my it's god! 20, like I can have five, right? Yeah, for, for, for the normal, deeper. for a normal yes. female orgasm. Like now, I could probably have a clitoral orgasm then, but I'm definitely not having anything, any of the other ones. Um, so this guy knew some of that stuff, and it would be like we'd have like hours long of sex. So that's what I always try to tell men. I'm like, do it for vain reasons. Don't you want to have that cock power and the confidence? Because. Um, you know, like, who you are in bed is who you are in life. That's what I always go by that quote. So it's true. Like, for me, I used to have, like, no confidence, and it affected every area of my life. So. Mm. Good for you. Oh, thanks, yeah. So how many clients do you have now? I'm currently, have, I have five. Five? Yeah, so I don't really, I, I like to go deep with people on my three-month program. So, yeah. Three-month program? Mm hmm And what's it like? Yeah, so the three-month program is a session a week. And they have unlimited access to me. And it's really amazing. Like, I had a lady have a vaginal orgasm. I'm having people get rid of shame and guilt. Um, just, like, experimenting and letting go of the old... Like, a lady told me the other day, she, she hadn't dated in years. She was like, I'm getting asked out. Like, people don't realize that you're energy, right? And you know. And so it's just so powerful when you do the work because your outer world does start change. Like, when I was working with this guy and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm getting like really great energy at the gym and women are looking at me and I was like yes that's good, good <laughs> yeah it's so amazing it is helping people mm -hmm. find that confidence definitely you know I'd say people you always hear them say I can't find anybody I yes. can't meet anybody mm -hmm. and that energy is is so much of it you know, mm -hmm. what's, what you put out is what you take in. Yep. And so, I'll meet girls at the grocery store, in the produce section, like... Oh, yeah. And, and I, it's just like that energy is there, and it's like, oh, hey, how are you today? Yeah. What's your name? I'm David. And just like that. So there's really no... There's no reason not to. It's, it's definitely easy. You just got to put yourself out there. I agree with you, and I would even tell people, too, don't date. Go within, work on yourself, mm. then date. Absolutely. Because when you get through that cycle, you get discouraged and you get disappointed. If you keep dating the same type of person and you're like, oh, why? 
Then you get it that all men are the same, all women are the same. No, no, no. You. Facts. Which can be hard, <laughs> but true. Absolutely. Yeah. You gotta live with yourself. Mm hmm Yeah, I go... I don't really post about it much, but I go on dates by myself pretty much every day. Well, good for you. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, it's good. I go out by myself all the time. I go out by myself probably nine times to the tenth that I go with a group of people or other people. Cool. Where are you going? Just everywhere. Oh, nice. Just like different restaurants? Every, or... Everything I do. No, like... Uh -huh. Events I go to, parties I go to, I usually just show up solo. Coming from work or this or that, but it, it just, it baffles me that so many people have like a crux that they can't go somewhere or do something without somebody else. They have to have mm -hmm. this or that, this codependency. It's like, fuck it, like, do you love yourself? Do you want to be with yourself? Cool, because if not, nobody wants to be around you. Yes, I agree with you, and listen, um, but I've dealt with that though, and that's so amazing you do that because you know I, I have a twin sister, and so I grew. I, I came into the, the world having that. It was a blessing and a curse because you're right. It is so powerful and empowering to be like fuck. Like I really want to go to this concert tonight. None of my friends want to go. I'm gone. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, it's good. I love it. Mm-hmm. That's really great that you do that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Let's take a little break. Okay. And we're back. I can't remember where we left off. I think we were talking about semen retention. Semen retention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go back into that. Yeah, it's just, you know, really powerful and it's really important. And, um, you know, like I was saying, it's like 95% of women are underfucked. Like, let's be blunt. And so... Underfucked. 95%. <laughs> like, I actually do agree with that. I agree too. Yeah. Holy. Like, that's why most women are on antidepressants, if we're going to go there. Not getting fucked. <laughs> but we're like, and so, and having really bad sex. Absolutely. And the yeah. guys aren't empathetic. They aren't thinking about the women in that position. Yeah. They're getting their nut seven minutes or less and well, what is it, 90 seconds? Five minutes. Five minutes. Or they could do it. They just don't know. Like, a lot of guys I talk with, they want to be great lovers and great, um, you know, pleasing women. They just don't know. Yeah, I've, in my sexual journey, mm -hmm. learned that the leading up to it, for, for a man too, but particularly for women, is just important, if not more, than everything else, intercourse and, and everything from there. Oh yeah, definitely. Like if I don't, especially at the beginning, you know, play with the nipples, the clitoris, go down, do that work, like she's not having a full real orgasm it's just not gonna happen well i think it depends on the woman um but i also think it like it's like like look, the whole body not just the generals you know um because people are so quick to go to the do that first you true know? yeah yeah i try to keep my chest to her chest mm -hmm. um and a lot of it mm -hmm. that's good yeah i've um learned that the more full body contact I have during intercourse, the better I can come, usually. Well, yeah, I mean, think about it. We all crave that, right? I think that that's why so much of our society is like, you know, we have the loneliness epidemic. There's all these issues going on now because we lack that. We lack the, the emotional, spiritual, deep intimacy. And um, you can't get that through porn. You can't get that through casual one as is. You can get that through a deeper connection. Or you could even have it through a casual relationship just as long as both people are in the same vibration. Yeah. Mm. In the same vibration. Mm -hmm. I like that. So what are your personal, professional, and fitness goals? Ooh, okay. So I guess we'll start with personal for me. It's to jump all the way in. I haven't... I haven't gone all the way with the vegan thing, so go all the way in. And then I want to, I ran a 5K recently, it was good, but I know I can do better. And then for just professional, just grow my YouTube, grow my following, um, just build my business and travel. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. I love it. Where do you want to travel? Uh, Bali, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, 
basically this side of the world. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Eastern Hemisphere action. Mm -hmm. Where have you traveled so far? Um, I've been to a lot of places. I've been a lot of places in Europe. Um, I went to Berlin on a school trip. I went to Italy on a school trip. Prague. Um, Greece. Russia, Hong Kong. Wow. Um, yeah, all over America. Yeah, so my soul is like craving expansion and travel and adventure. So that's that's the plan. As so many of us are. Mm hmm. Just aren't in tune or have the courage or capacity to say it. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, think about it. That's why, that's another thing why I feel like people just, it's so important. Like, we crave that. Um, yeah, it's important to travel. You learn more from traveling than anywhere else. Absolutely. Especially about yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely. Testing those limits that you have, getting out of your comfort zone. I like to think everything that makes you uncomfortable in any sense makes you stronger. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any experience, any anything, if it, if it hurts you, it helps you. Yes, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Well, especially doing what we're doing. Like, you, I'm on country every day, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I think that's great. It's so important. Yeah, physically, I do a few things. I wear these blood flow restriction bands around my arms and legs that essentially limit blood flow to the heart, not from the heart. Mm -hmm. And so blood will pool in your extremities, creating, tricking your muscles into thinking that they're working harder than they are. Mm -hmm. Creating increased lactic acid buildup, mm -hmm. which increases human growth hormone. Also pumps all this blood, oxygen to your blood. Mm -hmm. And um, once it goes back to your heart, it's like supercharged. So that's something that I'd like to do. Just a normal everyday activity and also when I'm working out. I'll wear a 20 to 40 pound weighted vest. I will do all these little things that just kind of make my normal life or workout routine more uncomfortable. Yeah, that's to make great. Me stronger. Wow, good for you. Thank that's you. That's amazing. Well, yeah, you have a lot of energy, so that's really important. I strive to, mm -hmm. for sure. I just had a sip of that. C4 and um, that also helps it get it makes your it makes your skin a little prickly. Oh, it does? Yeah, really? yeah, it's wow. It's like one of the chemicals inside. Mm -hmm. Pre, it's similar to pre workout and all that. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. So, do you have any siblings? I have a twin sister and two older brothers. Okay. What's that like? You know, being one of four, we're a party of 13 now since both my brothers are married. Oh. So, yeah, it's wow. a big family. And we're all together. It's a lot of fun. Um, I have five nieces and nephews. Definitely makes me realize I do want kids, but not right now. <laughs> five um, nieces and nephews? Yeah, they're five of under the age of seven, I think. Wow. Yeah, so it's fun. But mass cast. Um, growing up as a twin, it was a lot of fun, but I felt like an identity crisis a little. Up until the past few years where I've learned, oh, this is Haley. You know, not the twins, the girls, um, the Helvestons. And so it was really good to kind of get out of Alabama and realize, who am I? Yeah, it was been good. Are you all identical? Um, well, you know, that's kind of hard to tell. I don't think so. Well, actually, I think so. We, so you all look the same, but it's a little different. Yeah. You know, you have to do a tissue sample to know, like, 100%. Yes. So I would say yes, but a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's two minutes younger. Uh huh. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so you got it. You got her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is she like? Uh, okay. So she's similar to not as far along in the journey as I'm on. I'm on, but she loves health, um, and she's blogs about natural beauty products. So she's really on to no animal testing. You know, a lot of the makeup they do animal testing with, um, and so she's a big proponent of like let's get natural vegan makeup. Um, and the natural products at home. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. I'm with that. Yeah, I'm all about it too. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I've been around products my whole life. My mom is a cosmetologist. My uncle's a hairdresser. 
esthetician mom, so she's been selling makeup and literally since I was in the wind. And um, with that being said, I don't fuck with product. <laughs> I don't. I don't want. I don't use any of it. I, I literally. I need the most natural shampoo and toothpaste, and that's that's it. Yeah, no, I agree with so. you. It's good. No, for well, for women it's different, but I, I still some of these ladies were. I try to not use as many chemicals either, because it does affect you. Yeah, this All this holistic journey I'm on. I, I've been kind of like that my whole life. I'm. I'm all about no materials. It's everything you own owns you. Yeah. And that's how I think of it. Like the essentials and that and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons they're kinda on this like white journey. It's like I don't wanna wear flare or this and that, I just want basic. Yeah. Well think about it, that's for why me, minimalism you know, is so big now. It's huge. And I've definitely not been a minimalist in my life. I'm it's so all this is so new to me between the food, between the exercise, between the things. And so I just don't want the chemicals in my body with the product. Um, I'm, I'm really against cologne and perfume. Um, I was with Chelsea at the mall last weekend. Mm -hmm. My friend Tiffany just opened a beauty bar in Perimeter Mall. So cool. And um, we went we went to her grand opening, and Chelsea had just finished like three or four hours of working out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, and I convinced her to come to yeah. the mall, like free, no shower or anything. And she was like, well, let me get some perfume to mask the sweat. And we were walking through Dillard's, and she went to put it on, and I was like, she said, should I put this on? And I go, nope. And I, I, I didn't see my body, but she, oh. she said, like, your physical reaction to what I just said on top of saying no was so drastic. Me. Yeah. Just, like, that's, that's how I feel about it. And the end of these non-natural toxins and scents, like, we're not, they don't really attract us. They drive us away. Mm -hmm. The pheromones that we naturally sweat are what attract us to each other, truly. Yeah. That's why I, I say oils are better than perfume. You think so? Mm -hmm. What do you think about pheromones? And oh, I definitely. Well, hello. Yeah. That's another reason why I'm against birth control is listen, this birth control affects your pheromones. Yeah. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy? How so? Well, okay. So, for example, I'm on birth control. Then I get married and I get off birth control. Then all of a sudden I'm not sexually attracted to my partner's scent. That's a problem. And then it's happened to women. Oh wow. Yeah. How do you over how do you combat that? Oh you don't? I don't know. I mean you can't. Cause if you don't like someone's smell, like that's a problem. It's biological. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big issue. So yeah, I'm all about all natural too, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely think of partners whose scents I've liked and ones that I have not. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that that whole thing is huge, yeah. Because me too. And then if they try to touch you, you're like, oh, I'm repulsed. Like True. that's that's the thing. That's it's a big problem. So how do you know Chelsea? I don't even know. Maybe through Instagram. I think I've known her over a year. Yeah, so it's been cool. I definitely am planning on going on her her retreat. Yeah. Hopefully, if I can make that happen, yeah, I would love to. Be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely be there. I'm going to be on a cruise with like 40 family members. My first cruise. Oh, wow. So cool. In the uh, Turks, Turks and Caicos. Mm -hmm. Never been there either. I don't think I've been there either, but yeah, that's going to be fabulous. I'm excited. So, it's literally the exact same dates as Chelsea, Matt, and Megan's trip. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Right on. Yeah, Megan seems pretty cool. Have you met her? Yes, I've met her once at the... Have you been at their dance thing? Right I now? went to the first one. Oh, yes. I've only been once, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. It's only one I've been to. Need to go back. I'm all about a static dance. It's statically moving. Oh, yeah. Um, I think in Jazzercise, back in 
elementary school, I remember one of the teachers being like, move in a way that nobody else in the entire world is doing right now. Yeah. And that's just kind of what I think about when I think of a static dance. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's amazing. So where'd you grow up? Alabama. Um, where in Birmingham. Alabama? In Birmingham? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting city. Yeah. My friends went to Samford. Oh, okay. Alabama, it's a great place to grow up to, you know, and be like a great family city, but I would, don't want to move back. When did you move to Atlanta? Four years ago. Four years? Mm -hmm. Almost five. It'll be five in April. Wow. Yeah. Right on, right on. Mm -hmm. So, any other tidbits of information? Ooh. I would just say I'm currently promoting, you know, I'm accepting five more clients for my three-month program. So I'm really excited about helping more people with that. Okay. And then I'm hosting, uh, I want to start hosting more workshops. So those are fun. Yeah. What kind of workshops? Well, they're, sometimes they're for women only and men only. Um, the last one I did was men and women. It was really fun. It was in Buckhead. And I led them through meditation. And then we did an open discussion. And we did eye gazing. And it was really fun. Because, I mean, everybody, I got great feedback on that. Because a lot of times people, you know, we're, we're looking at our phones. We're not... And so they were, it was really, you know, I got feedback from some of the ladies saying it was very uncomfortable for them to look in each other's eyes. Because that's very intimate. Very intimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was so it good fun. feedback? Yes, yeah, yeah. It was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things that Chelsea's aesthetic dance is the eye contact, the hugging, the really long hugs. Yeah, it's like really that. cool. Me too. No, I love all everything about that. Cool. So where can everybody find you on the internet? Okay, I am Haley.Helveston on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then on YouTube, I'm your guide to love. Your so. guide to love? Where's that from? I, I changed my name in my business. Yeah, it fits better. Because it was Holistic Health with Haley, and this is more into what I'm doing now with the sexuality and the spirituality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like Holistic Health and mm -hmm. Haley, too. Very true. You're right. That was, that was very, that went. That, that Triple H. Yes. Mm -hmm. Word. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks so much Thank for having me. Thank you so much for coming on, everybody. This is fun. Yeah. Check Haley out, and thank you all so much for tuning in. Cool. Yes, thank you. Wow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. That was an amazing podcast. Haley was an exceptional guest. Did a really great job listening and paying attention as I spoke and when she spoke. It was so much fun and I look to have more people on like her in the future. So if you're looking to get on the internet a little bit better and have a holistic mindset, let me know. Come on the show. Signing out.